here is the Writer's Almanac for Thursday. It's the 18th of February, 2021. It's the birthday of the novelist Toni Morrison, born in Lorraine, Ohio, 1931. She was in her late 20s when she returned to her alma mater, Howard University, to teach. She joined a local writer's group, which required that you have a piece of writing for the meetings. And so she wrote a story about a young black girl who desperately wanted to have blue eyes. She put the story away for years. She moved off to Syracuse, New York. She got a job editing textbooks, went to work at Random House. She moved to Queens, New York, lived in a little house so close to the jet landing lane at JFK that everything rattled every time a plane landed. She wanted to read a good novel about the effects of racism on vulnerable people, but she couldn't find the sort of book she wanted to read, so she decided to write it herself, and she got out her old story from that writing group, and she began to expand it. She would wake up at 4 o'clock in the morning to write, and then she'd go to work, she'd come home, she'd make dinner, take care of her boys, and then go back to writing once they were asleep. And that novel was The Bluest Eye, was published when she was 39 years old. It's the birthday of the poet Jack Gilbert, born in Pittsburgh, 1925, traveled around a good deal, went to Europe, came to San Francisco, where he hung out with the beat poets. He was hailed as the brightest new poet coming down the road, and then he disappeared for a long time. Finally, in 1982, published Monolithos, a finalist for the Pulitzer Prize, died in 2012 at the age of 87. It's the birthday of the man who wrote Zorba the Greek and The Last Temptation, Nikos Kazantzakis, born in Heraklion in what is now Greece in 1883. And it's the birthday of Wallace Stegner, Lake Mills, Iowa, 1909. The family moved out west, father hoping to strike it rich. They moved to Washington State, Montana, California, Saskatchewan, finally settled in Salt Lake City. Wallace's brother died suddenly of pneumonia. His mother died of cancer. His father committed suicide. His first big success was a book called The Big Rock Candy Mountain, loosely based on the experiences of his own family. Here's a poem for today by Anne Campanella, mid-February. The day is warm and dank as early summer. Crows scream and pitch in the woods like the ruckus of old women fighting for the shreds of their lives. A sudden silence, then the hum of a black-winged cloud oozing through the naked sky. The ruckus begins again. Under layers of winter gray, the farm is pale and muted, the barn door shut tight, the only animals in sight, an earth-brown squirrel and these harbinger birds. I am waiting for the sun to shine again, to learn how to unfurl my heart in its warmth. These days, neither long nor short, bright nor dark, wet nor dry, fill me with a sadness I cannot name. Yesterday was Valentine's Day, a day of love and chocolate. My father, born 81 years ago, always bought red cardboard hearts full of truffles for my mother, my sister, and me. Now he is gone. This morning, the doctor taps his pencil against the screen, a six-week ultrasound. There, that's the heartbeat, a tiny flutter outlined by gray. A poem by Anne Campanella, mid-February, from What Flies Away, published by Main Street Rag Publishing Company, and used by permission here on the Writer's Almanac, funded by donations from listeners like you. Be well, do good work, and keep in touch.